For over 40 years, Star Wars has been a part of our culture, a part of our lives, and a part of who we are. Now, there's one place with something for every type of Star Wars fan, the Beyond the Blast Doors Network. From the latest in Star Wars news. A great day, an exciting day here on the YouTube channel. To collectibles. Oh, I'm jealous. Yeah, what it's do you beautiful. How much you want for it? Interviews with creators. If you want your book to feel necessary, it has to deliver some insight or some piece of information that you didn't get anywhere else. Famous fans. Yeah. 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 That's great. <laughs> Fan documentaries. This moment, like the force awakened in Ray, but it also awakened something in me. And great conversation with casual and hardcore fans alike. You know, I, and I've seen a lot of things end up on the cutting room floor that I'm like, oh. The Beyond the Blast Doors Network was made for you. New content nearly every day of the week on video and podcast. There's something for every fan. Visit beyondtheblastdoors.com and on YouTube, search Beyond the Blast Doors. Welcome to the Hall of Chronicles podcast. I'm Andy, and I'm flying solo tonight. Josh is with his family on a little family outing, and um, we got a couple of really cool things lined up for you guys tonight. Remember, we are part of the Beyond the Blast Doors network, which has six days a week of Star Wars content for every kind of Star Wars fan. You can find us at beyondtheblastdoors.com for all of your content. Uh, today, there is an article up that I put um, on Chad Gibbs, G.I. Joe slash Star Wars office. And it's awesome. Go look it up. Um, it's posted on Twitter as well, at Holochronicles, if you want to follow us on Twitter. And shout out to our patrons. Um, we appreciate your support each and every month. And if you'd like to be a part of that, please go to patreon.com uh slash beyond the blast doors and just for the price of a cheeseburger every month you can support six podcasts which is pretty cool all right i'm going to start the show tonight by paying off something that we talked about recently um you know finishing off the last vehicle in the vintage star wars collection for my collection i should say and that was the ewok battle wagon we've talked about it and it has arrived and I would love to just take a moment and share it with you. And then we'll get to our special guest for the evening, my buddy Paul. So let me grab this here. Ooh. This is the battle wagon. It is pretty good size. Got that awesome skull on the front. Now the uh, the battering ram does move. Um, and what I, I liked about this is that typically this comes cracked, but it's in good shape. And if you recall, it is missing the drum right here. So I do have to go through and search for the drum that sits atop of the Ewok battle wagon. Um, it also comes with a little jail that goes in the back here, a little containing <laughs> unit for whoever might grab that piece of meat hanging in the air. But yeah, here it is. Like I said, it's pretty good size and looks good sitting next to the Ewok village. I would uh, would highly recommend getting one. There's there's usually one on eBay that you can find, maybe two. They don't pop up all the time. They're not super common, but you usually don't have to wait too long to find one if if you got the dough because they're not super cheap. 
but you can find deals on them just like anything if you're patient. All right. Uh, welcome to the chat. Uh, two men, Matt, Nick, Mr. Rez, Chad Gibbs. All right, Chad. Speaking of the guy who we featured in our hashtag show me your collection. Good to see you here tonight, Chad. And nice collection. You, uh, as Chad and I got to talking a little bit, um, we are kindred spirits in our love for GI Joe and, and, uh, star Wars. And he has a, he has a really cool, uh, dual collection in his office. I mean, how can you not love the USS flag, right? It's pretty stinking awesome. Uh, Mr. Most, Sam Most, good to see you, buddy. Now, side question for those of you that grew up liking both G.I. Joe and Star Wars. Um, what's a cooler toy to have? This was a poll question uh, put up a couple months ago, but what's a cooler toy to have? The USS flag, which is massive and awesome, or the uh, vintage collection Katana sail barge, which is also massive and awesome what do you what do you think um there's no wrong answer so answer freely the price ended up being about 350 bucks on that um battle wagon and it is missing one one thing there it is missing a part so so budget accordingly. All right. Without further ado, I'm going to bring my buddy Paul on here. And let me give you just a little background on Paul. I met Paul a few years ago when I was at a crossroads in my collection. In my collecting. I had a lot of things. I had some Transformers. I had a bunch of G.I. Joes from when I was a kid. I had some Star Wars. I had a record collection. I had my finger in a lot of things and they were cool, right? But I got to the point where I felt like I needed to decide what am I going to collect and maybe I should focus it. Well, then comes along Paul. Paul was selling a bunch of figures. I wanted to say it was around 100 figures. And many of them were complete. And he was, uh, I found him on OfferUp. He was selling a bunch. And I remember thinking, all right, I want to do this. I'm going to get the money real quick. I messaged him. I said, hey, if you can give me a week. I'll get the money and uh, and then we'll do the deal. And he was like, sure, no sweat. He was pretty cool about it. So I remember, I think I had about 45 figures at the time. And I sold them on eBay immediately, which gave me a little chunk of change. I sold a pistol. It was a World War II era Remington 1911. I still kind of wish I had it, but... It was worth it. I sold that for a little bit. I sold a couple other things, got the money together, went up, met Paul, and uh, Paul's a good dude. And he's kind of inspired me um, in my Star Wars collection a little bit. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Penrose. Welcome to the show, Paul. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That's cool to hear the other side of that story that I didn't know you sold all that stuff. It's crazy to hear that, that side. Yeah, well, um, when I got when I first got to your place, um, you took me to your, I don't know, office. What would you call it? Your Star Wars room? The Star Wars room. And, that's what we call uh, it. Much like much like the case of figures behind you now, you had something similar and it was awesome because not only did you have all the figures, but you had variations. And I hadn't, and at that point, I hadn't seen all of the variations 
in one collection at once. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, you got a little strawberry just like me. But uh, yeah, you had you had the blue snaggletooth with the toe dent and without the toe dent. You had uh, you still have. <laughs> I could see him behind you. You have a bunch of farm boy Luke's with different color hair. Um, so first question: How did you get to Star Wars? You're because you're a bit younger than I am, and and. Uh, Maybe not somebody I would typically associate with vintage figures. <laughs> yeah, so it all started for me back when I was younger. The The original trilogy had been re-released when I was like seven. And I'd never even seen the movies, but my brother and his friends got into the action figures. And so then that was for me, too. I started, I had action figures before I'd even seen the movies and uh, definitely got hooked on the collecting part. And then I saw the movies and then it was that much more of an obsession. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget. My dad told me one time when I'd been collecting for uh, probably four years. And he's like, you know, if you stop opening them, they're going to be worth more one day. And so from that point on, I remember debating like when I'd get a new one, like, oh, do I open it or do I not? And so I started buying one, you know, two of every figure so I could open one and keep one in the box. Um, and so I had pretty much everything from 1995 on at, at the point. And I remember seeing a vintage collection at an antique store and thinking, well, do I need everything, you know, from before that would like complete my collection. And uh, so I ended up doing, I bought this, this vintage collection for like 400 bucks. Um, and then I pretty much just stored them in these little tackle box containers and they went in storage and I never did anything with them after I got them because I didn't think they were that cool as far as the figures went. You know, everything was more detailed, newer. Um, and then I there's a couple times in my life where I started selling my collection. And then in the process of selling, I would look at other things. And then basically when I'm trying to sell my collection, I get back into it. <laughs> and so. That's pretty yeah. much what happened with the vintage stuff is I started like doing research on what it was worth or this or that and then seeing the variations and I I just got hooked. Oh, and then God. most of them were incomplete. So I had to try and get all the weapons, uh, which we all know is a pain. And so that kind of stemmed where I'd buy to get better. So I'd just buy a whole section off of somebody. Um, and then oh, whatever was left over. Um, so that I could complete the figures and that started my vintage obsession. Did I lose you? I think I, I lost you there for a sec, Paul. Yeah, are we back? Am I the only one still in here or did I get dropped? You there, Paul? <laughs> I'm here. Are you here? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened. Um, <laughs> Good deal. Hey, two men. <laughs> uh michael you gotta run i see so we'll we'll catch you we'll catch you after the show so let me go back because you were giving a beautiful soliloquy about how you were collecting and i probably caught about half of it but why did you want to get rid of your collection a couple of different times oh that's a good question I think that it was just like different points in life where I was like, 
kind of got into cars. And so it's like, oh, I could use the money for other things. Um, there were certain things that I never wanted to get rid of that I was going to keep no matter what. It was more just a downsizing because I had so much stuff that literally I couldn't display it all. And I'm like, what's the point of having this if it's just going to be in boxes in a closet kind of a thing? And so. So what what were the what are the things that aren't ever going to get sold or traded or what what's your you're going to hang on to these with your last dying breath? Um, I will probably keep at least a full vintage run no matter what. Um the only thing that makes me nervous is the reproductions. I've I've thought about how good they're getting and the concern there, but I'll probably still always yeah. keep a full full vintage run for sure. And I don't know. I feel like everything I have currently, all the vintage stuff, there's not much that I currently that I want to get rid of. I have a hard time selling anything that's in good good condition. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. Um you recently, I think it was recently because you messaged me out of the blue about it. You recently got yourself, well, I, I'll let you tell the story, but it it ranks up there as maybe one of the best uh, whoops a daisy finds in <laughs> a lot of in a lot of of uh, Star Wars figures that I've ever heard of. Um, the people that follow the show have heard me tell that, you know, I bought a, you know, just a, a lot of cruddy figures from a guy one day and in it happened to be a, a hollow tube, hollow cheek tube Tuscan Raider, which, you know, and it wasn't in great shape, but it's still worth a hundred bucks, you know? So, uh, but this is another level. So go, go ahead and go ahead and share that. All right, so um, I've been really trying to find a super good condition uh, farm boy Luke because I have I bought a graded double telescoping loop Luke for a good deal on a Facebook page one time. I think I paid like six hundred bucks, and the saber itself looks perfect, but the figure is like faded and has paint loss. And so I was like, well, I'd much rather just you know if I could send it back in with a better condition Luke and get a better grade. I don't know why they sent it in with such a terrible figure. Um, <laughs> and so I've been looking and then just the lettered sabers and stuff. I just have gotten kind of hooked on the farm boy Luke's. Um, and so there was a lot that had uh, quite a few of the first 12 figures and the saber was there. And so I wondered if it had a lettered hill or, or basically just a close up so I could see if it was a reproduction. And sure. it seemed like uh, the eBay seller was, um, like an antique dealer. They didn't really seem to know much about Star Wars. And so I was like, can I get a close up of the lightsaber? And so she sends me this picture of the lightsaber and it, it has the double telescoping, like she pulled it out. So I could tell that, okay, that's a double telescoping saber. Is it legit or not? And so I messaged on one of the, the pages and the forums and said, hey, how does this check out? And I've noticed that people are really quick to drunk, jump to reproduction now. They're like, oh, if it's, you know, if it's cheap, it's too good to be true kind of a thing. Right, um, right. I had the same exact thing with a vinyl cape Jawa where I asked and everybody's like, it's fake, it's fake. And uh, so I, I looked at the other thing she was selling and it was from the same era. She had a 12 back stand and I kicked myself because she had the original mail away. Um, thing and I didn't know what that was worth so I didn't even bid on it but after I went back I was like oh my gosh so it just lined up to me I saw the break points if you research the double telescoping sabers there's break points from where they pulled it off the tree so there were some good signs and so I just took a gamble I'm like worst case I'm out like maybe 15 bucks because the rest of the stuff was worth it so sure enough it got here and it was it checked out so basically paid what a normal Luke with a saber would go for Ugh, man man that i mean that's a that's a fifteen hundred dollar figure that just was it <laughs> <laughs> i mean i couldn't believe it <laughs> i told my <laughs> wife and i didn't know if other people had seen it too because the auction you know and so i didn't know how much i'd bid and there's always the chance it's for reproduction so you don't want to bid too much you know sure yeah and so, 
I think I put my bid at four hundred dollars and I, I paid for the lot. It was like eighty something bucks. And I told my wife, I'm like, I think I just got really lucky. And then, man, every day I was checking to see like the tracking. Is it here yet? Is it here yet? And I like had to. I told her like package it super carefully, please. <laughs> but it got wow. here and it was safe and it all checked out. So, wow, that's that's such a good story. And and they do exist. Those stories do exist um, to varying degrees. You know, you think you're getting something, and surprise, it's actually this also. And, uh, you know, but I credit for you for doing your homework and asking for that picture because had you not, yeah, you know, the, the natural, um, the natural inclination is that it's probably, it's probably fake. It's probably a repro. It looks good, you know, and you don't just find those out in the wild. Right. So it, I mean, that, I mean, I, I would have thought that, but asking for that photograph changed everything and it was oh, worth it. It was worth the question. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're right. Stinky tortoise. That's insane. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's become uh, one of my favorite stories now. I've, I've retold it to a couple people already. So hats off to you, Paul hats off to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I've had but that a few, Definitely had quite a few, none, none that good, but I've had a couple Luke stormtroopers that were in like modern lots that I basically got for free. Oh, and then yeah. my vinyl gave Jawa, I think I paid $400 for, and it was the same in a lot. And people were like, Oh, it's fake. It's fake. But the seller said it was original. And so I was like, well, if he's, he's, I've message proof, you know, a lot of times in eBay, if you've got the conversation, eBay is going to back you, even if it is fake. So it's like mm -hmm. worst case scenario, you send it back. So, right. Your inconvenience, yeah. Yeah. Your inconvenience a little time, but it, it will work itself out. But, uh, yeah, that's awesome, man. So you've got a double telescoper and a vinyl kit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, uh, well, if, okay. So right over your shoulder there, how many farm boy Luke's do you have? Cause that's in that top, top row that um, there. I think there's about 20 of them. Awesome. Is that yeah. your favorite figure? Uh, I like I like the Jedi Luke too. Those two are probably my favorite. Um, okay. Boba Fett. I love Boba Fett. Cool. So there's a couple that are probably ties. Okay. Okay. That's uh that's pretty awesome. So um, well, I I also noticed that you don't have a ton of vehicles. Is no. that on purpose or is that a space thing? Is that, or just not, you just never been interested in it? Yeah, I think all of the above. I've never, I've had, I almost had a complete set of the mini rigs. Um, and then I just, after a while, I was like, no, nah, it just didn't look as good in my collection. I felt like on the shelves and stuff. And so, yeah, I have, I have a couple of modern, like bigger vehicles. I have the Legacy Falcon and the AT-AT Walker. Uh, and then obviously the shuttle up there. Um, I think I have an X-Wing somewhere and stuff. It's just all in storage still. But just trying to simplify and keep the... I've noticed that the collections that visually appeal to me when I'm looking at other people's are the ones that are just like just a complete run in a nice display. And so I've kind of tried to downsize and minimize to, to that. But yeah, yeah, it's well, hard. The addiction well. is real. <laughs> uh, you're you're among friends here so uh i think we all can relate to that um so you just primarily stick with figures and i see you got a, a few helmets back there um are there some figures on the card or are there just the card backs um i do have uh i think i only have two well i have a, a max rebo band that's still carded and then I've got two figures that one came with a collection that I bought. Actually, and then the Romba, I have a Romba that's carded that I paid the same price as loose. And I was like, oh, I'll just open it. But then I couldn't open it, of course. <laughs> so, um, but then the carded ones that you can see right there are the 40th anniversary figures. So I have bought some, you know, the current stuff. 
So, okay, that was that was my next uh, question because you did mention that you had a legacy Falcon, which is massive. Um, but you're uh, you're not you're not just sticking to vintage. You will dabble in some newer stuff. Yep. Okay. Okay. And you leave those in the package. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so I do have actually. So the there's some loose. I bought some loose ones right here. The the black series. Yeah. So I kind of got into the black series, not when it first came out, but then later on, I kind of like, oh, these these are pretty cool. And yeah. with the new movies, I've, there's times that the mo new movies came out, and I'm like, oh, I want a couple of the figures. Um, and so I did get into the black series and tried to get some, well, at least the original tr trilogy figures, um, and got into that a little bit. So, so what? So with the black series, uh, what's your criteria for? I'm gonna get this one versus nah. Um, a couple things. Do I like it? Number one, like, of course, of course, you know, if it's a Boba Fett or I love stormtroopers, any of the army builder figures. So clone troopers or stormtroopers, I'm into those. I do also have an Amazon store, so I'll sell, I'll resell some things to kind of fund my collecting. Mm -hmm. Um, and so sometimes it's strictly resale value is it, you know, um, I know people have diff mixed feelings about that, but uh, for me, it's 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 helped me to do what I love to do, you know. Yeah. And so. No, that's a, we gotta we gotta fund our habits one way or another. I understand. Yeah, that's true. There's worse uh, ones to have too. <laughs> in the in the big picture, yeah, you're right. Uh, I just keep telling my wife that in the big picture, <laughs> it could be a lot worse. You know. <laughs> uh, Hey, what's up, Scotty? Thanks for joining us here, bud. Um, all right, so let's get to kind of our main topic here, and that is grading figures, or just grading in general. Um, one of my 2020 collector goals was to send something in to get graded, uh, because while I have, you know, I'm just doing a quick look around, I have a lot of stuff, but when it comes to the graded, I have very little. I have very few. I've got, um, I've, I've got, I've got three graded Boba Fetts, and I think that's it. I think that's it. And so, when I say graded, I mean, for those watching, you go, you go, mail them out, and uh, and and they grade them. They they put a number on them. Um, and then they send them back to you in a, an acrylic case, uh, so that they are protected and, and, uh, can maintain the condition that you sent them in as. So these are, these are two of the three that I have. Um, one's a, uh, Hong Kong Boba Fett. Um, another one is a, uh, a light blue painted knee PCB version, um, and then I have a, a Taiwan graded one as well. So I think at some point I'll probably go for a, a Lily Letty one, but uh, for another time. So um, you told me that you had recently sent in 64 figures. Did I remember that correctly? Yep, that's exactly right. 64 figures to be graded. So uh, were they all vintage Star Wars? Yes. And are you trying to get a graded set of vintage figures, a complete graded set? Uh, yes, I think I am. I So originally when I first I, – I bought a collection that had many of the first 12 graded um, with it. And so I liked to display them with the graded figure and then the loose figure in front. Um, and so I always was like, oh, it'd be super cool to complete that first 12 set and then maybe have like a last 17 set graded uh, too, because those are kind of like everybody loves the first 12 and the last 17. Um, so I had that envision in my head. Okay. Um, and then just as I went through my figures, I was like, you know, it'd be awesome to just have a complete graded set with the loose ones in front. So basically two complete sets. Um, and so I... We talked about it, I think, a long time. It was what? That was a couple of years ago or a year ago. You asked me if I had yeah. ever had anything graded. 
And well, I've, uh, I've been I've been thinking about it for a long time. So yeah, and so honestly, I'd looked into it before, and I think the AFA, if they would simplify the process, could make a whole lot more money. Because there was at least three times that I like started the process and was like, I'm confused and just like, whatever, I'll do it later. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's the same thing. It's been on my goal or my bucket list to do for so long. And I was finally like, I just need to do it. Yeah. Yeah. The, I've, I've, uh, I've gone on the website and I've kind of looked at it and I immediately got overwhelmed. Um, and, and so I haven't, I haven't. I haven't gotten back to it, but maybe, maybe with our conversation here tonight, maybe you'll give me the uh, nudge that I need here. So, um, so let's say, let's say you just, you have one figure that's in great shape and uh, you want to go get it graded. Like what, how long does it take to go through that paperwork process? Not, not the whole mailing in and, and waiting for it, but just the, just the paperwork. How long it take? How long do you think you, if you were to average it out, you know, you've got a good farm boy Luke, and you want to get it graded. You know, how long does it take you to fill out all that stuff? Now, not very long, like maybe ten minutes. But okay. when you're first doing it, I think it's a little bit more complicated. I had a whole bunch, obviously. I think initially I was like, I'll send like thirty figures. Um, and so basically there's two, two options you can do. You can print out a submission form through it, this through AFA. You can print out a submission form or you can go online and do a, a virtual submission form. Now, one thing they don't tell you is it's exactly the same. The only difference is if you do it online, they're just gonna populate and fill the form out for you and then you print it off. And you okay. don't pay for any, you just include that when you ship it. So okay. I was all nervous to submit my thing, you know, making sure I had everything right before I hit submit and then found out, oh, it just prints it off and you just include it. So I could have done it, you know, and not been so nervous. Um, and so that would have been good, good to know before I could have printed it out, reviewed it. And if I needed to make changes, made changes. But um, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing to know is that they have tiers. And so they want you to come up with what the value of the figure is going to be after grading, which is hard to do because it varies a lot based on what grade it receives, right? Sure, yeah. But, but generally they want to know, okay, if, if this is a vinyl cape Jawa, then you're, you're automatically going to have to pay for the archive tier, which is like 65 bucks. So okay. there's, there's just things like that that you learn and, and understand how the process is. So if you want to be cheap about it, if the figure is worth – uh, 400 or under, you can do the express tier and that has a longer turnaround time. So you're going to be waiting 30 to 40 business days to get those back. Whereas the archive is like uh, eight to 12 business days or something that are at the, from the time that they receive it. So. Okay. Um, all right. So like for your, did you get your vinyl cape Java graded? No, because I don't have a, the capes in good shape, but I don't have my Java has paint loss. And that's the other thing is some things that are sticklers about like making sure it's the right figure that goes with the cape. So there's, there's specific COOs. Um, they go with the vinyl cape Java and mine has just a little bit of paint loss. And so I'd really like to find a perfect one before I send it, send it off. Um, but it has to, it has to line up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been hard. I've asked around and ha so far haven't had success. Um, but yeah, I didn't send him in. I sent, I did, I think I did eight figures in the archive tier. So there was a yak face, a pop-up R2, a molded face, Jedi Luke, uh, two poncho Luke. So some of the higher, you know, stuff that's sure. a little bit higher value, but. Uh, most of it, I did the express. And so they'll come in two different. I'll get one back in a couple weeks and then the other set will come probably in a month and a half. Okay. I, uh, I want to, I want pictures when that happens. Uh, so let's, okay, let's just stick with the vinyl Cape Java. You, you said you got him for 400 bucks. So if you were to get him graded, uh, and I'm assuming it's a him, 
Okay. I'm, I'm assuming gender here. So apologies. Um, uh, you get them graded in the archive level. That's 65. So you're into it. 465 plus shipping will generously say it's 20 bucks because you put it in a big box and pack it up tight. And so you're into it 485, but then you get it back graded. Now I don't, I mean, you're not going to see a graded vinyl cape Jawa, even if it's at a 60 or a 65 for less than a thousand bucks. So your investment on that for the higher end figures seems to me like it's well worth it. But what I wonder is for like, let's just say you have like a really good stormtrooper that's bright white and has the good black paint and there's no paint rub, you know, for a figure that's a lot more common, um, you know, you probably, you wouldn't do the archive version for it. You do the, what the express version. Is that what, is, is that what it's yes. called? So you do the express version and how much does that cost? So, um, the other thing is they have, uh, memberships so you can, they have three options for a membership. Let me turn this on so I can tell you accurately. There's basically like a, a bronze, a silver and a platinum membership. Um, okay. If you get the platinum membership, you get 20% off. So for me, when I started totaling how many figures I could do, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to send in 65 figures, then I'm going to save 485 bucks. So the membership pays for itself. Then I, you have that membership for a year. So now I have 20% off. So you're, that's the other thing. If you got a lot of figures, then you're going to want to calculate and see, okay, which membership tier should I do? Or is it worth it? If you're just going to do one figure, not so much. Sure. The other sure. thing is they, ch they charge you for the return shipping. So that goes down the more figures you have too. So okay. definitely the more you send in, the more value you get. Um, but back to just a general figure, I feel like if your figure's not going to get an 80 or an 85 from AFA, if it's just a, you know, a hundred dollar figure or less, probably not worth it. I think that you'll, you'll at least get your money back and make some if it gets an 80. And then if it gets an 85, you're definitely going to probably come out ahead as long as you're not paying too much for the tier. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, okay. I, I appreciate what you said there about the membership too, because that's, again, for someone like me who hasn't gone through the experience before, um, you know, I would, I would start off by just maybe doing one, possibly two. There's, there's one definitely I want to do, and then maybe a second one. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do a membership for that, even though I might be tempted to, because you never know later on down the road, but now, nah. um, yeah. Now, and, and again, too, it, it depends on what you want in your collection, too. You, it may not, from a dollars and cents point of view, make sense to, to get a $60 figure graded at a 70 or a 75. But if you're trying to get, you know, like like you were wanting to do, like the first 12 graded, um, you know, just to have that as a set, then, you know, the the price and the you know, that stuff only matters if you plan on reselling it down the road. But if you plan on keeping it and you just want it in an, you know, you want it graded and you want it preserved in, you know, this condition that it's in, then by all means do that, you know, because that's what you want. Your collection should be how you want it to be. Now, I, I grabbed these two specifically because this one, I don't know if you can see, is graded CAS. And this one is graded AFA. Now, there's, you know, people have their preferences on which is better and, and which one should you do. Ultimately, they come back in nice cases. But is one more reputable or or what, what have you found in that regard? Uh, there's definitely a premium for AFA. They're still considered like the leader. Um, okay. Let me grab one of mine real quick.
So uh, what I really liked about CAS is when they first came out that they did the, the laser cut cases with the weapons displayed. So AFA, when they, you know, everybody's seen the old style cases. And so yeah. when CAS first came out, I was like, that's a no brainer. I want to see the weapon because, you know, there's, there's variations with the weapons and all kinds sure. of stuff there. Yeah. And then um, the other thing for me, I'm picky about AFA having, if I'm going to buy something I want it in the new case, because their standard has gotten a lot higher as they've gone on. Uh, when they first started out, they were grading reproduction weapons and, they didn't care as much about if it had the right accessory. Um, and then I've seen terrible figures. They got great grades. So there's debates about all that stuff. But if you get one of their new style cases, you're pretty much it's going to be up to a standard. Um, and I feel like they're a little bit higher than everything else. And so people know that. And so they they definitely fetch a premium. Um, I think CS is a good option if you just want to have it um cased they're cheaper and do a great job um i just wanted the best and so that's why i went with afa i still feel like they've got a little bit of edge over everything else Sorry. That's all right. She sounds like she needs a little attention there. <laughs> so, um, man. So, okay. So 64 figures, you'll get those back, you know, in a week up to a month or so. Um, and you'll be well on your way to having, a collection of graded figures. That's awesome. That's awesome. What? So what? So what, let's talk next steps here. Okay. So you get these back. What? What do you do next? Do you start finding, you know, the the other forty or so that that you would need to complete, or do you have them? You just didn't want to send them all at once, or what's next? Uh, so the others, the others, I think that I, I feel like they're not going to get, when you really start to look at the figures and thinking from a greater standpoint, it's amazing how you think you have a mint figure and then you look at it and you're like, oh, there's paint loss here. There's paint loss here. Yeah. And you know, kind of basically their expectations and what the grade's going to be. And so I basically wanted to do most of the ones I sent, I'm pretty confident, but it'll be a good, um, It'll be good to get them back and see how close as am I at judging compared to them that see the figures. Cause I've had a lot of figures that have come through my hands, um, but they definitely have had more. So I think that I'm pretty, pretty accurate, but we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because you know, you know that whether it's CAS or AFA, they have a standard that they're trying to abide by. But they also have multiple people grading these. So even though I'm sure I'm sure they're trained on on you know what's the difference between an 80 and 80 and 85, um, so that everybody kind of has the same knowledge base. Ultimately, you're still hoping, you know, fingers crossed, that you're hoping that they have they, a good day, whoever grades your figure, that they have a good day and that they're on the same page. You know what I mean? So yeah, an, 80, an 85 for you is an 85 for me, no matter what the figure is and, and there's consistency. And so it, you're right when you say like, oh, you know, sometimes you see figures that look kind of beat up, but they have a as good or better grade as some other ones. And so you kind of wonder how that happens and and I'm sure there are reasons for that, but maybe, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's not a good reason for that. Maybe that's, maybe one slips through that should have been a, a 65, but got put as a 75 or something. I, you know, again, this is where my lack of knowledge, uh, we're shining a light on it, but, um, but yeah, you're hoping that there's consistency there. Cause, cause you want, you just, that comfort you're taking, uh, time and money to do this and, and you want it to be correct. And so, 
I don't know. Did, does that make you nervous in any sort of way, or do you feel absolutely uh, comfortable that it's gonna it's gonna work out the way it should? I, I feel like I've looked at enough. Like I, I really like studied the eBay listings of graded figures to try. I'd zoom in and, and look at paint loss and things like that to try and find okay, what how harsh are they? Um, I've looked at some of the ones that I already have, and uh, so I've definitely have noticed that they've gotten stricter. And they're they're a little bit more picky than they used to be, um, but I felt pretty confident that that I'll get what I expect. But okay. I could I could be surprised. That's why yeah. I didn't send. That's why I didn't send in the whole collection before I wanted to do a trial run. Um, but I feel like most of what I send in will be an eighty or an eighty-five. Okay. So, all right. And again, that takes you know some experience and uh, to kind of know what to look for and, and, uh, and try and get on the same page as the graders. Uh, and do you, do you feel like that's true with CAS as well? Because I know you said AFA is, is been around longer is more reputable probably at this point, but like, do you feel comfortable with CAS too? If, if you go, if someone goes that route? Uh, yeah, I, I feel like there's the same. I've seen some that I'm like, oh, that's kind of strange. And and we that's the hard thing, too, is they don't give you like AFA. You can pay for a grading summary and they'll tell you exactly how it got the score it got and their procedure for grading. Okay. Um, now, most it's not worth to me. It's not worth paying for because it's going to speak for itself, the grade. Um, but that's the thing is you don't know. Sometimes you could look at a figure and it looks perfect. And like, why did it get such a terrible grade? Well, if it has a big scratch on it somewhere that's not necessarily taking off paint, it's hard to see that in a picture, you know. So sometimes you don't really know. Um, but I do feel like CAS is is pretty good. Um, they're definitely a close second. Uh, and then I, what another thing I love about CAS is that they'll give you a real score. So they do the same thing where they'll round to an 85 or, you know, an 80, but then they'll tell you, it's an 83.6 or whatever the actual grade is. So theirs is a little bit more precise as far as what kind of a grade it received. And I, I do really like that. Um, okay. And then I've seen they'll grade the figures with sabers with the sabers in their hand. I think that's really cool. Um, so there's definitely pros and cons to both. I would not be against sending some to CAS. Um, I just wanted to try AFA the first time around and see how that goes. Yeah. Is uh, the double telescoping Luke one of the ones you sent in? That one you just no. got? Nope. I haven't sent that one. Yet. I have a really nice Luke. I, I've got a couple, but I'm just unsure. I, I'd really like to just find a perfect one if I'm going to send in the, the Sabre, the double telescoping. Yeah. Um, do you have it handy? Because I've never seen one outside of like an eBay so, I mean, can you grab that real quick? I think our viewers would like to see it as well. I love this. Like, the story I love and the fact that it's right there, you know? I've never held one in my hand before, so. This so, this is, is the first This is the first one I bought. Okay. So, you can okay. see kind of the length of the inner. It sticks out both on the top and the bottom. Yeah. And so there's two versions of the double telescoping saber. There's like the lettered hilts. So they'll have a different letter on the hilt. Um, and then there's one that doesn't have any markings, which they call the circle variant. Because uh, yeah. if you zoom in on it, there's uh, little circles that run all the way along. Um, this one is a little bit bent, the inner. Um, see how brave I want to be. Now don't do anything foolish, Paul. So the okay. inner's a little bit bent, um, but this is the one I got just recently. God, that's awesome. So you can see there's the break point up on the top of the saber. Okay. That's the front. There's another one up towards the top. It'd be really nice if I had a better camera, but... Um, so those are good signs when you're looking to have those break points. And then the markings on the hilt, um, there's uh, known reproductions that have like two eyes on it. So okay. you definitely want to ask about the markings on the hilt and find out. And then 
definitely a, a super good source is to ask the experts if you can you know post pictures and they're they're always going to tell you oh, you got to get super good pictures which is the hard thing because a lot of times you'll ask the seller like hey can i get pictures and they take the picture with the potato and <laughs> so it is what you have you know what i mean and you're like yeah. i just want to know if there's any red flags right but so when you say ask the as experts um you know one one place i've referenced a lot of but they haven't updated in the last maybe year and a half or so is the imperialgunnery.com. Um, that's that's where I go first if I ever have any questions or if, if I'm double or if I'm cross cross referencing something. Um, do you do you have somewhere else that you go to um, or or maybe a person that you go to? He, uh, yeah, so I do do the Imperial Gunnery first too which I feel like is, is great when you're learning. And the hard thing is, is that if you don't have them both in your hand, a lot of times you can't even tell what the heck they're talking about. If that makes sense, you're like, <laughs> from this picture, I don't see. But uh, so um, there's a couple Facebook groups or the forums. Um, usually there's a focus collector. So somebody that's way into Yoda and they have a million Yodas or they'll have a million Jedi Lukes or whatever it is. And those are usually the people that it's like they love that figure. And so they're, they'll jump anytime somebody posts about it and share the knowledge that they have. And I'll try to go to those people. Um, like if, if the question is about a farm boy Luke, I'll find whoever has 5,000 farm, farm boy Lukes, <laughs> which has become such a thing now. I can't believe how many people will. I'm like, it's the nerdiest thing. I have this figure with 17 different shades of hair color and just <laughs> never thought that 10 years ago, this is where we, where I'd be. My wife comes <laughs> in and I'm studying, like literally studying plastic little pieces on these accessories <laughs> or whatever, you know? Well, you know, you're the you're the farm boy loot guy to me now. So I mean, <laughs> like if I have any farm boy questions, you're you're my guy. So or or uh, uh, Jedi Luke. So um, yeah. So Matthew says go to the IC Facebook page. That's my that's the same. Uh, that's why I tell everybody if you can go to the IC Facebook page. Um, so many knowledgeable people in that group. Yeah, he, there's there's tons of resources out there. You just have to look a little bit to get them. And and we were talking earlier before we got on here about, you know, Paul asked me if I was on Facebook or in any Facebook groups. And and I, Josh is, um, he's he's dabbled in that arena. I'm, I know I would love it, and that's what makes me a little nervous about it. Uh, I feel like I I do enough as it is, and. I uh, I get creative with how I spend things enough as it is, but uh, but I, I probably should just for the resources alone. If I have questions, you know, because you know, just because I happen to have some Star Wars stuff, I'm not an expert at everything, and nor do I claim to be. But uh, you know, kind of the purpose of this podcast is to help each other out a little bit, maybe put people connected to the right things, you know, in touch and. And, uh, and you know, and that's, and that's a reason why I wanted to have you on here tonight, Paul, because you're a lot more knowledgeable than me when it comes to grading. And that's something that I want to do this year. And it's perfect timing that you got a hold of me and, and that this worked out tonight. And, uh, I'm, I'm glad we got to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to close out cause we're getting close to the hour mark here. I want to close out with one question and it's a bit off to the side, although we did begin to touch on it before we jumped on the pod. So I want to finish this conversation with everybody that uh, is watching this and, and will watch this. And that is um, this week I uh, inquired about an auction on eBay that uh, suddenly was taken off. And I figured... Uh, the guy sold the two figures that he had for sale um, either on his own, you know, through some other means or whatever. But, it, but I messaged about it. I asked the question, Hey, did these get sold or did you just pull it off? Cause they'd been sitting, you know, they'd been sitting there for a couple of weeks and, and you hadn't had any nibbles or something like that. And he said that he was having second thoughts about selling them and he still had them, but 
if I wanted to buy him, um, then then he'd he'd put him back up, or we could not go through eBay to save me paying tax and to save him paying an eBay fee. Um, you know, we could kind of circumvent the process a little bit and uh, do each other a little favor by going that route. Except, you know, everybody knows somebody or it's maybe even happened to them before through a Craigslist deal or a, you know, offer up or something that doesn't have maybe the built-in protections that you get burned. And so, uh, you know, if it was just like a $25 deal, I wouldn't think twice about it and I'd go ahead and do it. No big deal, but it's for a, it's for a chunk of change and I'm not sure what I want to do. So, Paul, I know you've you've bought and sold and traded a lot through various platforms. Um, you know, what would you tell a guy like me or somebody else that's, you know, within earshot of this podcast? How do you go about doing that where both parties feel comfortable? Um, so I think that, like you said, if there's red flags, trust, trust your your gut if you don't feel good in any way. Um, but if you can get references on somebody, so that's the one good thing about the Facebook groups is you can get references and say, is anybody, Hey, anybody bought from this guy before? Um, and those usually work out. Um, and then knowing the policies, you know, eBay, I bought the, one of the only things that I ever got burned on was I bought, I asked this guy about the weapons in a lot on eBay. He says, oh, yeah, they've been in my attic for, you know, 20 years. And so I could tell just by looking at the ends of the sabers that they weren't the old reproductions, the painted crappy ones. Um, but then they got they came and they were the newer reproductions that came out in like 2011. And so it's like, OK, you lied to me because there's no way that's been in your attic for 20 years. Right. And so because that message is there on on eBay, I could have fought it based on the value, I was just like, it came from the U the UK. And so I just, it wasn't worth it to me, but sure. I knew that if I wanted to, I could go to eBay and they're going to protect me as a seller. Usually those are as a buyer, usually those places are going to protect you as the buyer more than the seller. So that's another thing is you have to be careful sometimes as a seller, because you can have buyers burn you and say, Hey, I got this and it was fake. If it wasn't fake or, or whatever they're going to try to do, there's always going to be people that are trying to scam. Um, and it's unfortunate. Uh, but definitely if you do your homework, if you, you know, if they're suggesting, even if they suggest friends and family, if you can document that, then PayPal will protect you. If they're pushing that, then there's different, different loopholes you can do to utilize PayPal and make sure you're protected. But I mean, it's a hassle. So I definitely trust your gut. And, uh, you know, if it's not worth it, you know, like, for, for example, if you're doing a thousand dollar purchase, it might just be worth it to do it on eBay and have that protection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you know what you said, there's true. If if there's something in your gut that just, eh, you know, just wait, you don't have to. You don't have to, you don't have to buy, right? Like things do come around, even, even the rare stuff. It, you might have remorse There's about it for always, a while. Always a deal. Yeah. So, um, you know, do your homework. First of all, be knowledgeable about what you're hoping to buy. So you can ask the correct questions, especially if it's a high dollar item. Um, you know, this, this is kind of becoming our collector tip here for the, for the episode here. But, uh, yeah, Mark says those English. Yeah. He's he's one of them, Paul. He's <laughs> No, nah, he's a good guy. We have actually a, a lot of good relationships with our UK brothers. Yeah, uh, so I actually brought collector we buddies. Didn't talk, we didn't talk about this, but there's UKG too. Oh. See, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I feel like they have a little bit worse reputation, but the deals, sometimes the deals like if you look at the figure, like this would get a good score at FFA and I got it for a much cheaper price than, you know, and so, and you could even have this recent into AFA or whatever and regrade it if you wanted to. Yeah. 
So that I think that's a good question. I'll throw out to uh, our UK buddies. Um, you know, have you have you used that before, or do you grade through AFA or CAS? So I guess I guess there's no reason why you you know might wouldn't you know want to do that. So I, I guess I'll throw that out there to you guys. You know, and I know Mark's listening right now, but to anybody later on, you hear this later on, let us know. Let us know if you've had good experiences with. Is it UKG? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yep. U- UKG. I I have uh I've not. I've just got well the the three that I have are AFA and CAS. So I'm not the right guy to ask. But um, <laughs> Mark says <laughs> that. You see what Mark says there? Yeah. Crown and a <laughs> cup of tea. Yeah. Excellent. Jolly good. Jolly good. So all right. Well, Paul, I've. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on and, and chatting with us here. I know uh, my Wi-Fi was a little wonky at the start, but but we got it sorted out, and I think we answered some of my questions. I think uh, I think I can come back and refer to this in the future, um, and I can direct some people uh, safely. You know, if they come to me with questions about grading, and and I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get those two figures graded at some point. Um, I'm going to do it. And, and, uh, you've given me, you've given me the proper nudge. Uh, well, uh, maybe that, so. I, yeah. And maybe I can even, uh, let you know when they come and we can do a live when I open the box. Oh, that'd be cool. Definitely. Well, I definitely want to get you, get some photographs for our, uh, you know, our weekly collection feature. We'll have to have, uh, yours featured sometime. Um, before we go, is there, is there a, are you on Twitter? I know you're on Facebook. You want to, or you want to promote your Amazon store or anything? <laughs> so my Amazon store doesn't have much on it now, but uh, just Paul Penrose is my Facebook. If anybody wants to add me on there. Okay. And it's spelled just like it sounds. Yep. And uh, yeah, uh, find them on Facebook and, uh, he's a good resource for farm boy Luke's as well as grading and other figure questions. He's got a great figure collection. Uh, I almost said he's got a great figure, but that's not what I meant. That but, too. Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, thanks for those who were following along in the chat. Thanks for those who listen to this on the rewind. And uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul, for joining us. This will not be the last time we talk. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to put it, I'm going to do this here in case it breaks. Then at least it's on live. <laughs> it's just teasing us here. Just teasing it went us. well. All right. Well, thanks again, Paul. And uh, to uh, those listening, go play with your toys.